There is a sin mentioned in the Bible that is considered unforgivable. This sin is discussed in the Synoptic Gospels and can be found in Matthew chapter 12. It is a sin for which there is no pardon in this life or the next. Many people worry and stress about whether they have committed this sin. We receive numerous emails from individuals who believe they have committed the unforgivable sin. Surprisingly, there are a significant number of people living in constant fear, uncertain if they have committed this unforgivable sin. It is important to clarify that the unforgivable sin is not idolatry, murder, perversion, adultery, or any similar transgressions. It is a much more complex sin than that. In Matthew chapter 12 verses 22 to 34, there is a story where a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus. He healed the man, and the crowds were amazed, wondering if Jesus could be the son of David. Upon hearing this, the Pharisees made a statement, saying that Jesus casts out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, responds by explaining that a kingdom divided against itself will be destroyed and that Satan would not cast out Satan. He questions the Pharisees about the power by which their sons cast out demons, implying that they would be the judges of their own claims. Jesus then asserts that if he casts out demons by the Spirit of God, it signifies the arrival of the kingdom of God. Jesus goes on to state that one cannot enter a strong man's house and plunder his belongings without first binding the strong man. He declares that those who are not with him are against him, and those who do not gather with him scatter abroad. Consequently, Jesus warns that every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven, except for blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Speaking against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but speaking against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven in this age or the age to come. Jesus continues by using the analogy of a tree and its fruit, emphasizing that a tree is recognized by its fruit. He addresses the Pharisees as a brood of vipers, questioning how evil individuals like them can speak good things, as the mouth reflects the abundance of the heart. It is crucial to note that Jesus is addressing the unforgivable sin to a group of unbelieving Pharisees, not to believers. So how did they commit this sin? They attributed the work of Jesus to the devil, claiming that he casts out demons by the power of Beelzebub. They did not mention the Holy Spirit at any point. Their sin was not actively or consciously speaking against the Holy Spirit, but rather attributing the works of Jesus, which were done through the power of the Holy Spirit, to the devil. In essence, they rejected the power of the Holy Spirit working through Jesus Christ and denied that Jesus is the Son of the living God, thus rejecting salvation. It is important to understand that a Christian cannot commit this sin. A born-again believer cannot look at the work of Jesus and claim it to be the work of the devil. Those who have committed this sin do not even care if they have or have not, as they perceive the work of Jesus as evil. Therefore, as a Christian, there is no need to live in fear of having committed an unforgivable sin. The individuals who commit this sin do so with full awareness and consciousness of their actions. Those who turn to Jesus Christ in faith cannot commit this sin because they acknowledge who he is and recognize that he is the way to God. God is a forgiving God who can forgive you for your sins, no matter what you have done in the past. Do not live in fear. You are not destined for hell. God is a forgiving God. Confess your sins today, and God will forgive you. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 31, it is stated that all manner of sin and blasphemy will be forgiven except for blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Every sin can be forgiven. Reflect on your past and think about the sins that still haunt you. Confess them to the Lord and let go of living in the past. Stop beating yourself up over sins that God has already forgiven you for. Move forward with your life, leaving behind the weight of guilt and condemnation. God, by his very nature, is a forgiving God. Don't allow the spirit of condemnation to reside in your life. As a Christian minister, I have learned that the devil recognizes true born-again believers. He knows that there is nothing he can do to prevent you from going to heaven. However, he can try to make your life miserable by instilling a spirit of condemnation. Many Christians mistakenly believe that their sins are unforgivable, but that is not true. God is not angry with you if you are his child. He does not hold hell over your head. He loves and cares for you. While your family or others may hold your past against you, know that God does not forgive you because others have forgiven you. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, it is stated that if we confess our sins, 
God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your sins are forgiven and forgotten by God. They have been paid for by the sacrifice of Christ. Your slate has been wiped clean, and you are forgiven. Think about all the sins you have committed and realize that each and every one of them has been forgiven. You are blessed because your iniquities are forgiven, and your sins are covered. Your true home is in glory, and your citizenship is in heaven. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. You are part of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. You belong to God, and He belongs to you. While your earthly relationships may struggle to forgive you, rejoice in serving a God who forgives unconditionally. He does not hold grudges. Confess your sins, repent from your ways, and experience the blessings of the Lord. God is not a man who holds your sins against you. Remember Romans chapter 4 verse 7, which says, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. The night you were saved, God fully forgave you of your sins. You have been forgiven, and God will never bring up your past sins to condemn or blackmail you. Rejoice in the fact that your sins are forgiven and paid for by Christ. Take comfort in the knowledge that you serve a forgiving God. So, today, turn away from your sins and confess them to the Lord. You are forgiven, so stop living in the past and embrace the new life that God has given you. Don't allow guilt and condemnation to hold you back. God's forgiveness is available to you. Be blessed, for your sins are forgiven, and your future is secure in Him. I encourage you to embrace the truth that God is a loving and forgiving Father. Your past sins do not define you. You have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let go of the weight of guilt and shame, for they have no power over you anymore. While others may hold on to your past, remember that God's forgiveness is greater. He extends His grace to you without reservation. Your sins have been forgiven, and you have been reconciled to God. Your relationship with Him is restored, and you can walk in the freedom of His forgiveness. Don't allow the enemy to keep you trapped in the cycle of self-condemnation. The devil wants to rob you of the joy and peace that come from knowing you are forgiven. Reject his lies and cling to the truth of God's word. As you journey through life, remember that your identity is found in Christ. You are a new creation in him. The sins you committed in the past no longer define who you are. Instead, you are defined by the righteousness of Christ imputed to you through faith. Live in the assurance that God's love is greater than any sin you have committed. His forgiveness is boundless, and His mercy endures forever. Don't let the enemy deceive you into believing otherwise. If there are sins that continue to haunt you, bring them before the Lord in sincere repentance. Confess them to Him, knowing that He is faithful and just to forgive you. Release them into His hands and allow His healing and restoration to take place in your life. Remember, forgiveness is not just a one-time event, it is a lifelong journey. Each day, seek God's forgiveness and His guidance to live a life that honors Him. Walk in the freedom that comes from knowing you are forgiven and loved by the Creator of the universe. In conclusion, know that God's forgiveness is available to you, regardless of your past sins. Embrace His love, let go of fear and condemnation, and live in the freedom that comes from being forgiven. You are a beloved child of God, and He delights in extending His mercy and grace to you. Rejoice in the assurance that you are forgiven, and allow His forgiveness to transform your life.